Okay, so we're going to be using acrylic to do some brute force attacks on a wireless network. And I have here a network uh, right now. The thing you need to have with acrylic, you need to have two network interface cards. Well, I normally you can do it without two, but since I'm doing this video live, I need to be able to stream and do the wireless attacks. You can't use an interface card to do um, packet capture at the same time that you're doing a live stream, you get some conflicts. So right now I have two interface cards on my computer. I have one that's dedicated to doing the brute force attack and then one that's doing the streaming and the recording. So I have here, I have uh, my mobile device and I've set this up with a password that's not very secure. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna open this up I'm going to start my mobile hotspot here and it should have a pretty unsecure password. Once that pops up, we should see it here. It's going to show up as a Samsung device. I have a Samsung phone. And we should see that once we start the packet capture here. So we're going to start that. I'm going to say no. Start the capture. And here what we have. I want to make sure that I'm on the right Wi-Fi. And if the stream cuts out, it's because one of these, uh, the NIC, one of the NICs is disconnecting for some reason. Okay, but here we see this. We see this, this uh, Galaxy phone right there. It's a Verizon SM Samsung Galaxy phone. And it's an access point. You see the MAC address at, right there. Doesn't have the same MAC address you might see as like a normal router. We see some details. We see you know, 802.11 standard Alpha Charlie, which would be Wi-Fi 5. Alpha X-rays, Wi-Fi 6. What we could do to this is we can right click on this. We go to send a connectivity module. So send a connectivity module. This is where we select our interface. We select our interface here. And I'm selecting my second interface, Wi-Fi 2. Now we have to apply a list or a dictionary list. Now there's a bunch of dictionary lists you can get to do your, you know, here's a bunch that I have, for example. These are WPA2 word lists. And if we look at one of these, these have thousands and thousands of passwords in them. So this is understanding this is helpful to understand how to protect against this, because this is what a hacker would do is they would get these lists and they would use these to do um, to do their ha uh, hacking because they would just basically brute force they try all of these different combinations they use a program like acrylic or ideally they would capture the password hash and then they would do the cracking offline so these are all variations of different different words and combined these dictionaries, as they're known, would either be referred to as a dictionary or a rainbow table. Rainbow table is usually a little more evolved, has thousands of entries, so you can say that this combined would be a, a rainbow table. And these are different rainbow tables that I have. We're not gonna use one of those because it would take a long time, probably take all day. I'm just gonna use one that I've made very simple, and it has about five passwords on it. So one of those passwords being the password that's on the device, just for the demonstration. But if you do an assessment of your wireless infrastructure, you may wanna pick some common passwords, commonly used passwords, and use that in your assessment to see if your users are using those common passwords. Ideally, you'd be able to see that if you're using WPA Enterprise. You can set a password strength but it can be helpful if you're a consultant, you know, if you're if you uh, brought in to assess a small or medium-sized business that maybe doesn't have the most robust identity access management. So here's my password list, and you could pick a text or a dictionary file. The DIC is a dictionary file. This is just a text file. So I'm selecting that .txt file, and I'm gonna hit OK. That's gonna send to the connectivity module. Now here I have multiple options 
and I do have a connectivity option here. So if we go to the connectivity option, here I see my uh, Samsung device. I'm going to have to stop my packet capture. And then from here, I could right click and I could try those passwords. And here at the bottom, you see it's starting task on the Verizon device. It's trying the password. First off, it's trying to put some passwords in different, different uh, variables of the word password. So it's trying the word password. Now it's trying, here we go, password found, password. So now we know that the password for that mobile hotspot is literally the word password. And that's confirmed by Acrylic using that text file that we had used earlier. So in this way, we can, we can determine if there's weak or unsecure passwords being used on our wireless network. And we're able to use an existing list that we have or a dictionary file if we want to do it that way. So pretty helpful if we want to assess our wireless network. So I hope that was, that was pretty informative. I want to do a couple other things, though. But great job with this. Let's go ahead and examine some of the other functionality with Acrylic. So one of the main things you would use this for is network quality. And this is going to be measured by RSSI, uh, Relative Signal Strength Indicator. And if you go here, it's going to give you a little explanation. What are your Wi-Fi channels? Here are the frequency bands. It's going to explain this. Connection speed may, be, may significantly vary depending on the channel being used, for example. And it's giving us a live example based on one of the, the networks that we're seeing there. So that's pretty helpful. So we have the channel quality, the signal quality. So it's explaining right here our signal quality. Obviously, where you place your wireless access point is very important. And in this example, we probably would want to place our wireless access point to the left here in this office to get greater coverage as we're, our signal is degrading at these, some of these farther offices here. And this can be affected by distance, uh, by physical obstacles. Stone and concrete usually is a little more degrading to a signal than wood or plaster. Our broadcast strength, you could turn up or down your broadcast strength a lot of times the antenna will come at full strength, but some antennas can be adjusted to be higher. You can use a signal booster too, and you can use a, a repeater antenna. A repeater antenna would probably be a good idea in this office. If we put a repeater antenna over here to the left, we'd see equal strength through both. Repeater antenna would be a thin client, while the access point would be a fat client. If access point, the Wi-Fi router would have the functionality of routing the packets and performing the computations for the network, while the thin client would just be an antenna with limited functionality. So if we take a look, we also have our network security. And we mentioned, of course, if you're studying for one of your CompTIA certifications, you have wired equivalent privacy. We don't use this. It even says right here it's obsolete and broken. We have WPA, Wi-Fi protected access. We don't use WPA anymore either. Uh, but if you see this, and it's your only option for wireless security, then you would want to select that. In the newer certification exams, this would also be deprecated, so you'd want to choose either WPA2 or 3. Now, there are vulnerabilities known now in WPA2 even, particularly the uh, key reinstation attack. So Wi-Fi Protected Access 3 was developed to solve those. And this is the default standard with newer devices. Now, if you see, if we look at our capture, most of these devices are protected with Wi-Fi protected access too. And even a lot of the major network providers like Comcast would even um, pick that or use that, that standard in their routers. So it's commonly used there. Now, this is going to give us a detailed view for each of the networks that we pick here. Okay, so that's pretty helpful. Talk about network security. And 
So if we select another network, though all of these are WPA2, let's try, we pick the, the mobile access point, the mobile hotspot. We see that the signal strength is pretty good. It should be pretty good because the access point's about three inches from the antenna. <laughs> so I hope it's good. We also see transmission speed here. Transmission speed gives us a uh, the maximum data transfer rate. And basically it's linked to the different wireless standards. So these wireless standards, 802.11 standards, Bravo, Golf, Alpha, November, Alpha Charlie, Alpha X-Ray, they have various signal strength or maximum signal speeds. So we see 802.11 Alpha X-Ray, which is Wi-Fi 6, has the highest speeds of the group, at least at the higher permutations of it. Depending on your channel width, you can get various, uh, various signal strength and the channel width is something that changes a lot more with the newer Wi-Fi standards. So we see that this wireless access point, the mobile hotspot, has typical transmission speeds between 300 megabits per second and one gigabit per second. Remember, if it's a lowercase b, that's bit, not byte. So if we select like this one, we can see a different input here and we see the different possible channel width. It's still using Wi-Fi, uh, is this one using Wi-Fi 6? No, but it's still using probably November, which should have up to one gigabit. The 5G networks would have higher than one gigabits per second because they're running off the 5G band and you can support much faster speeds with 5G. Remember with 5G, your wavelength is much shorter. The waves are coming more frequently. Because of that, you have more pulses of information sent over the network, more radio waves, which means faster transmission speeds. Though of course that means a shorter distance that you can transmit to. With a 2.4 gigahertz network, the wavelength is longer. So it has better penetration and better range, but the transmission speeds can suffer. And we see here the different standards, 802.11n in November, that's Wi-Fi 4, Alpha Charlie is Wi-Fi 5, and Alpha X-Ray is Wi-Fi 6. And then we have all the crazy numbers and letters combined for stickers and for visual representation, which can be just a mess, I think. <laughs> a lot of times, if you see this on your router, it's uh, the Wi-Fi Alliance's way and Wi-Fi Alliance comes up with these terms Wi-Fi 5, 456, etc. They try and make it easy to understand visually. Most people don't understand what these letters mean. So <laughs> it can be a little confusing. Okay. So we get a score here overall network quality and we can assess that for each of our networks. So that can be pretty helpful. All right, wonderful. I hope that was helpful. I hope that was a good uh We'll stream there and we got to look at acrylic and look at different wireless technologies and how we can assess our wireless network and how we can do a brute force attack as well. Thanks so much for joining in. I hope that was, that was informative here.